Hi, my name is Damien Wills. Welcome to Go Fly Online. Today we're going to be looking at operations in and around non controlled aerodromes and some basic radio core fundamentals. I've been flying now for over 30 years and instructing for a bit over 10 years. Some of the common issues I see with both experienced and non experienced pilots in and around, in and around non controlled aerodromes is making too many radio calls not making enough radio calls, or just making the wrong radio call. The worst type of pilot is a mixture of all those three put together. Today we're going to look at how to get those radio calls uh, right, and just some basic procedures in and around the CTAFs um, that you would encounter every time you go for a flight uh, to and from your local, local aerodrome. Firstly, let's look at uh, what a CTAF is. Now a CTAF is also known as a common traffic advisory frequency and it covers uh, three main types of non-controlled aerodromes in Australia anyway. Uh, first is what we call a non-registered aerodrome. We also have a, a registered aerodrome or CTAF and we have certified CTAFs. Now basically a certified T CTAF is a CTAF or non-controlled aerodrome that has a high level of compliance and it usually is, a, is an aerodrome that has not, uh, regular public transport, such as airliners going in and out of that aerodrome. To get an aerodrome um, certified, it has to meet certain legal minimum requirements to be certified, and it has to be checked on an on ongoing ba basis to make sure that aerodrome still complies, mainly for public safety. The way to find out whether your aerodrome is certified registered or non-certified is in the URSA. Now it's very important before we uh, go for a fly uh, from your departure aerodrome or when you're arriving at a new aerodrome that you check your local procedures out in your URSA. All the information is contained in the URSA. I'm not going to go into how to actually read the URSA in this lesson but it's important that all the local procedures such as the airfield elevation, runway directions, circuit directions, uh, and any local procedures or special procedures and your radio frequencies are situated in the URSA. Now when it comes to the radio, firstly when we do our prep takeoff checks, make sure your headsets are plugged into the headset jacks uh, in the aircraft. I don't know how many times I've heard um, other aircraft transmitting blind, usually it's because the headsets aren't plugged into the actual headset jack in the aircraft, so it's an important part of the pre-takeoff checklist. Other thing we need to check is that the actual radio is working. We've got the volume set correctly, we've got the correct frequency selected and backup frequency selected, and the intercom system as far as the volume and the squelch is set correctly as well. If there's two in the aircraft, you can actually check this between each other before you take off. Uh, very important to make this a part of your pre-takeoff checklist. A lot of people will do a radio check every time they start taxiing out to the aerodrome. Not, not it's not important to give an all stations radio check unless you had a, um, uh, some doubt as to whether your radio was working or not. The whole idea of getting correct radio phraseology is to keep radio calls to a minimum. On the east coast, in particular in Australia, uh, there's a lot of shared radio frequencies and it can get very busy in the air. What we don't want is pilots making calls every five minutes to broadcast their intentions or where they are and clogging up those um, radio waves so other pilots who need to make mandatory or important um, uh, radio calls can't get their radio call in. So we need to keep our calls to a minimum. In relation to talking on the radio, we need to talk um, slowly, clearly, not too loud but not too soft, and use the correct phraseology. We have three basic types of radio calls. The first one is a mandatory call. The other types of radio calls is recommended calls in all circumstances, and the other one is recommended calls depending on traffic conditions. Now these are the, the, the three main types of radio calls both uh, in non-controlled airspace and in our non-controlled aerodrome or CTAF. Now in relation to a mandatory call, we must make a mandatory call if we think there's a, a, a collision uh, or an imminent threat uh, with another aircraft uh, that might be close to us. So for instance, if you were um, either in class 3 airspace or you were departing an aerodrome and you had another aircraft that you could hear on the radio and thought they may be um, um, getting very close to you and you can't get them visual, it would be uh, fair to say that would be a mandatory call to that other aircraft to try and get a clearer idea of its position in relation to your aircraft. 
So basically, if there's any imminent threat, you need to be able to give, a, 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 it's fine to give a mandatory radio call. Uh, all other call, the other one is a recommended calls in all circumstances. Now we need to give this call uh, if we're in a, definitely in a certified non-controlled aerodrome, CTAF. Now the, and the other one would be a recommended call depending on traffic conditions. So if there was traffic in the, in the CTAF or non-controlled aerodrome, you would need to give these types of calls. At Calandra, we have a lot of traffic in the area, so we teach our students to give a recommended calls in all circumstances and teach them to do recommended calls uh, depending on traffic at all times because there's always generally traffic here. A standard radio broadcast consists of location traffic, so for instance here at Calandra, it would be Calandra traffic, the aircraft type, the call sign, the position, the level, the intentions, and the location again. In relation to a recommended radio call in all circumstances, we need to give one of these radio calls. If the pilot intends to take off, you should give a call immediately before takeoff or during the taxi. Inbound to an aerodrome at a safe distance at 10 nautical miles uh, with your intentions and time of arrival at that aerodrome. Uh, also, if the pilot intends to fly through but not land at 10 miles from the aerodrome, um, and recommended with an ETA overhead uh, for that aerodrome. For recommended calls uh, with traffic, we need to give a call before entering an active runway, just before joining a circuit, if the pilot intends to make a straight in approach, if the pilot intends to join base, or um, if the aircraft is clear of an active runway. Some of the major issues we have with pilots is making too many calls that aren't required, making not enough calls, or making the wrong or incorrect call. So there's nothing more annoying than you're, you're trying to get a radio call in, and another pilot is making a call every two minutes, for instance, every time they turn crosswind, downwind, base, or they're giving a position report when they're out in the training area every five minutes. This is just not required unless there is conflict. So I'm going to briefly talk about radio failure, failures now. So radio failure can happen to anyone at any time. So let's just say you're in a CTAF non-controlled aerodrome and your radio failed. So the basic um, requirements are to see and avoid other aircraft, give way to other aircraft, keep transmitting, because you actually may be able to transmit, but you may not be able to hear other aircraft. Um, if you've got a transponder, you could um, uh, score 7600, that's more for controlled airspace, but you could just still do that outside of controlled airspace. Uh, and then obviously give way to other aircraft, join the, um, the circuit if it's safe to do so, and land. Now if you were on a, say, a, a, a navigation cross-country um, um, flight um, and you're going into a, an airport with regular public transport, uh, with airliners coming in and out of that aerodrome, and there was another aerodrome near there without um, RPTs, and so no turbine um, airlines going in there, it was, a, it was a quieter aerodrome, it might make more sense to divert away from that aerodrome into the quieter aerodrome, particularly if you had a radio failure. You don't want to be flying around without a radio um, if you've got um, RPT aircraft in that area, in, in the air. Once again, keep transmitting um, um, your intentions, just in case they can hear you. Remember, this is only a basic summary. So remember to consult your own fly instructor or the visual flight guide or the AIPs for more information. Now let's go and look at some basic scenarios in relation to non-controlled aerodromes and radio calls in the air.